This is the UDK Material Editor video tutorial, part 1A. Um, we're using UDK-2010-12. Team members are David Coster, Jado Ross, and Travis Everett. We are C15, and the date is January 25th, 2011. So I'm going to be going over the basics of the Material Editor. Um, I'm going to explain how shaders work, um, go over the layout of the Material Editor, and then we're going to set up a really simple material. Okay, so to start out with, we're going to load up our content browser. And we need to create a new package. So go down here to create new in the bottom right or bottom left hand corner of the content browser. Uh, change the name to of the package to whatever you want. So for this, we're going to just change to basic texture. Or sorry, basic shader. And name it test. And then for group, if you want to break it up into uh, subfolders, you can just to help keep things more organized, but for our purpose we're not going to use a group. And then go to factory, change that to material. Click OK. And then this is going to bring up the material editor window. Um, just go over the basic parts. Over here we have the preview window. Um, when you start creating the shader um, and start hooking up the nodes, it's going to show the, a preview of it in real time on a basic primitive over here. Um, you can change the different types of primitives over here. Um, we'll get more into that once we actually start building the shader, though. And then here in the middle, we have the material expression graph. This is where you're going to be dragging in uh, different material expressions and then hooking them up to actually form the shader. And then over here, we have all the different slots. Um, for the really basic ones, we're just going to be using diffuse, specular, and uh, normal. And then over here is the material expression bar. Um, expressions are basically what you're going to be applying in order to create the shader um, by hooking them together. Um, the, each of them have, has a different effect on one another. Um, so for instance, you can say add a color over the top of a texture and then uh, multiply that by another texture. Um, you can get results similar to uh, like blending layers in Photoshop, basically. Um, there's different kinds for all sorts of uses. Um, up here, we have the toolbar. In the left-hand corner, we have the Save button. Um, you can't hit Control, Control S in here to save. Uh, nothing will happen. You have to actually click Save over here and then go back to your content browser and um, also save your package in order for things to actually save. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you can toggle on the grid, and then this changes the preview, the preview primitive over here. And then just a couple useful buttons over here. Here we have Clean Up Unused Expressions. So if, say, you have a, different, a couple different expressions in here after you're done hooking up everything that you're not using, just click that and it'll clean it up. And then also we have show and hide unused connectors. Um, basically the same thing. If you uh, have a bunch of different connectors that aren't being used for anything, just hit that and it will hide them. Okay, and then finally we have the properties bar. Um, we're going to be dealing with this more once we start bringing in shader or uh, shader components that um, have parameters. So we'll talk about the, that more during material instancing. Okay, so to start out with, we're just going to build a really basic shader that only uses the diffuse, the spec, and the normal slots. So go to your content browser, and we need to import the textures. So right click, go up to import, and then go to the place where you keep your textures. Um, for us, we're going to upload Asphalt, Diffuse, Targa. And it's going to bring up this window for a diffuse. Uh, for a diffuse map, you don't need to actually click anything in here, or at least for our purposes, you don't. So then click OK, and it will add it to the content browser. So then make sure that's highlighted. And then we're going to go in here and load a texture sample node. And texture sample nodes are basically just where you apply a photographic 2D texture to, to the shader. Um, so if that was highlighted, it's going to just automatically be applied. Um, the alternative is if it's not applied, you drag one in. Just make sure that is highlighted. Then go over here. I'm sorry. You have to highlight it over here next. Make sure that's selected and click that little green arrow, and it'll load automatically. Okay, so then just to go over some of the basics of the nodes, um, this is where the name of the, of the expression type is. Um, next to that is 
the preview button. Um, having that on or off determines whether or not it'll sh everything is compiled and uh, updated in real time. Um, this is the input jack. It's where you're going to be putting in other nodes um, that are traveling through it to uh, hook up to the different channels over here, so like your diffuse and your normal. And then here we have the output jacks. Um, the black one is a combination of all of these. You have a red, a green, a blue, and an alpha underneath that. So to make our diffuse, you're just going to grab that. And you'll see in the preview window that that shows up projected over the top of it. Okay, so next we're going to do the same thing. If you uh, click and hold, or if you hold T and then click, it'll drag in a uh, texture sample. That's the shortcut for that one. So next we need to import our spec map. Make sure it's highlighted. Click that button and then attach that to the specular. And you'll see that it gives it just a little bit of extra shininess. Okay. And then finally we're going to bring in a normal map. And the one thing for normals is you have to go down here to the compression settings and then change this to TC normal map. And click OK. And make sure that's highlighted. Go over here, click that, and go to normal. And then you see that in the preview window, um, those three different expressions are all working together to create the basic shader. Okay. So in the next part, we're going to be going over some of the, the basic um, or more common material expressions, and then we're going to talk briefly about material instancing.